coat of primer on. I got to put a coat of paint on. So get this front suspension put together. And on to the next thing. Got your lower ball joint goes up from the bottom. Get your ball joint press from AutoZone or wherever you have close to you. Hopefully you'll be able to rent one. Got your pressing cup that's bigger. You want it big bigger than the diameter of your ball joint to set on your A-arm like that. Your receiving cup or your uh, whatever that's called. Started straight. square all the way around. Um, put your grease boot on. You're ready for the upper. If this has never been replaced before, the, this will be Pop riveted in, you'll have to grind the tops off, smack it through with a punch and a hammer. If it's been replaced, you're just gonna have four holes here for your bolts to go in. This will only go in one way. Put that in there like that. This goes up. your ratchet going the right direction. I'm just using this to snug them up. I'll tighten them by hand. Tightening something like this that's got multiple bolts, I like to do them uh, like you do when you put your lug nuts on. I 
go back and forth and stagger them. That way you're not folding them crooked. A little windy out today. He's got lock workers on him. You don't have to crank them down real, real tight. Like I said, they're not a very big bolt, so you don't want to break it. Step is frames. These are the western chassis, match the rear three inch drop. Uh, the end of your spring goes into a, a, the pocket on your lower A arm. It's got a spot where the end of it sits. Sit that in there like that. I give it a little twist to make sure it's where it's supposed to be. The top of the spring also lines up with the pocket up there, like that. I guess I'll put the control arm on, or the uh, spindle on first. That way I can raise it up and get it into place. rubber this rubber boot goes down all the way holds the grease in Using the cup that came with the ball joint installation, it don't fit exactly, but if you just hold it over to one edge at a time and tap it down, it tends to work okay. Got a need another set of arms. Spindle up there, get the bolt started so it don't fall off and drop it. This can be a little tricky doing it by yourself. Get the lower pocket in like I was showing you.
that these springs are actually short enough that they until you get weight on them they're going to wiggle around remember that after you get it together if you jack up the front of your vehicle it's going to sag enough your springs will tilt over when you let it back down and it compresses you'll hear it may not do it immediately may not do it till you start driving again if you don't pay attention to it you'll hear it pop into place might scare you if you never heard that sound before these get tightened down all right not quite dry but i stuck it up there anyways see if i can stay out of the way this time <clears throat> These have lock washers on them. Uh, actually, just put a dab of Loctite on there also. Probably don't need it. set the spindle on there all right so the next step is putting the rotors on before you do that you have to pack the wheel bearings um, I've had this can of grease for I don't even know how long um, premium high temp if you read on the back it says uh, exceeds 500 degrees Fahrenheit this is the one you want to use in wheel bearings I also have this can of synthetic it says for wheel bearings but it's only good to 320 degrees I don't know how hot wheel bearings get but I would say uh, the higher the better when it comes to that it's not gonna hurt anything Want to get you a big glob of grease. Shove it in your hand like that. Just press against your hand and get all that grease there. You want it up inside the up inside the rollers there. Shove it in from the side. See how it's squishing out. Just go all the way around. Keep doing that until you got it, got it packed all the way full. Not a real fun job, but has to be done. Work your way all the way around. Like that. Throw a little in your bearing race inside your hub. that drop that in there and you'll want to take your seal put that in there tap it into place while I got a mess in my hands I'm gonna go ahead and do all the bearings so I'll be back in a minute once you have the wheel bearing set in there take your seal set in there like that if you don't have these uh, bearing and seal tools you can do it with just a hammer just 
tap it slow and go even all the way around the edge. Don't whack it. You just want to tap on it to get it in. I just said spindle. I meant rotor. I don't know what I said. Just slide this on. This is your other wheel bearing that I packed earlier. That goes on there. Got a washer here with a little keyway in it. Slide that on. Then your nut. All right, these are inch and a sixteenth. If you've never done this before, this is. Just do that to get those bearings seated in there real good. Now you want to loosen it back up. You want this tight enough, there's no play in it but not tight enough that it won't turn. Ow, that hurt. See, that's getting too tight there. So back it off until your castle nut lines up with your hole for your cotter key. that through. I just think I get my tools ready before I start this. ends up so it ain't gonna back out. Gonna have to get a band-aid and take and pack this full of grease, whack it on there, go to lunch. Alright. Got my leak plugged up. That hurt. Got my finger caught between the rotor and the bracket. Uh, another use for the um, receiving cup that comes with the ball joint tool. These, I don't know if it's just the ones that come with CPP or not, but these things are fair to get in. I'm going to try this, see how this works. Not bad. Get that blood off the rotor. get me some food when we come back we'll put the caliper on repeat on the other side